All right, it's 11 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> you guys, I'm super excited and thank you so much for coming to hang out with me today. I really hope that my goal with this whole entire series is to help everyone develop healthy habits so that they can support the QT wave as it's coming into you. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm really tailoring all of this to help you and support you and what you guys want to achieve here. Because this is pretty much, I'm going to be doing group health coaching, which is something I've done for a very long time. And then that way you guys can meet your goals. So today what I was going to do is start off by just telling you about my background and my philosophies and then talk to you about how you can set your own personal goals and I created a little survey that I'd like you guys to fill out and get back to me within the next day or two. And it's very, very short. But it's just to try to help me gauge the content as we move forward. And um, so essentially what the way this is, is what I want to inspire you guys about is everything is frequency. Everything. And mm -hmm. if you look at it like our bodies... When I ask people like, what is your body made of? Most people say water. Okay. Well, if you break everything in your body down, it starts off like with a cell. Okay. And a cell is made of molecules and molecules are made of atoms. And then if you look at an atom in a microscope, like a subatomic microscope, most of what you're going to see is empty space. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that empty space is energy, right? Because we're not just 99.9% .9 empty space. It's all frequency, energy, information with a little bit of particles. Okay. So we, everything is energy. So what happens is some of our habits add energy in, right? And some of our habits take energy out. So what you want to think about, it's called actually called Jing. So I I'm a Reiki master and I've studied Qigong as well. So think about Jing as like an energy savings account. And so when we want to look at our life, we want to look at that savings account and is it empty or is it full? Okay. So that's why Darlene has noticed that when her clients take vitamins and add things to their life that are going to make them healthy, their results are even better. Because if we go into the Q arc, hopefully God willing, very soon, we don't want to go back to doing the habits that made us sick in the first place. And oftentimes people blame genetics for things that are going on with them. But genetics is just a very, very small portion because there's a whole science called epigenetics. And what that studies is how you can turn your genes on and off based on your lifestyle habits. So that's kind of like the background of where we're going to be going because you're not going to just take vitamins and eat McDonald's and think that, oh, now, you know, as long as I'm taking my vitamins, I'm healthy. That's just not the way it works. So now I'll tell you a little bit about my background. So when I was very young, like 10, my dad said to my mom, if you ever get fat again, I'm leaving you. So imagine what that would do to a 10 year old girl. It was very crushing. Even like my first, one of my doctors said, don't let yourself get fat like your mother. And I'll never forget that. It was very damaging. So from a young age, I was addicted to dieting and I had a friend and we would go on every stupid crash diet you can imagine. And so it really damaged my metabolism. And then when I got to college, I started running all the time and doing high impact aerobics. And I was literally beating my body up. I would eat like very little, but what I was eating wasn't nutrient dense. And I was addicted to diet Coke. And I was always like on, you know, Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, the pineapple diet or whatever it was. But I just had all of these, you know, I just was addicted to dieting. And I remember I used to run half marathons and I'd get shin splints and patellar tendonitis. And then I would spend, you know, a month in rehab, like in physical therapy. And one day I was in yoga 
And the yoga teacher came and just touched my shoulders in Shavasana. And I just started sobbing. And at that point, that was like my turning point of you're beating yourself up. Why are you doing this? And before that, I had, you know, started having kids and feeding them kid cuisine, of course, not nutrient dense at all. And so I, in 2007 is when I really started studying nutrition. And I was just like, there is more to food than calories in and calories out. And I started learning about micronutrients and macronutrients and just everything because my school that I went to was really about lifestyle, not just about the food on your plate. So then in 2011, I became a health coach, 2012, a personal trainer. Then I did a sports nutrition um, certification and I started a podcast in 2016 where I would interview all of these experts in the wellness space, whether it was, you know, a lot of doctors that went the holistic route. And I'll never forget one day I was interviewing somebody and he's like, I just want to make sure our philosophies align. I'm like, why? Like, how am I going to learn anything new if I'm just in a bubble and only hearing things from people that think the same way as I do? So I've interviewed all kinds of people, you know, in the last seven years. And one thing that I did realize that I had to love myself to health and not beat myself up and, you know, try to starve myself and over-exercise, but really truly love myself like the inner child in me needed to be loved. And even though I've been doing this for a long time, I'm nowhere near perfect, okay? So I don't put myself up on a pedestal by any means, but I am passionate and I have felt this way for quite some time. So the first thing I'm going to ask you guys to do is kind of just go inside into your heart and go ahead and close your eyes while you're doing this and ask yourself, where am I in my health journey like right now? And just kind of gauge it a little bit, just evaluating how you're feeling. That's the only thing I want you to tune into is really how you're feeling right now. And now go back five years ago and think about how you were feeling. And just let your heart tell you the right answers for you today. And now acknowledge this trend. Are you improving? Are you going back? Like, where kind of are you? Just notice where you are. And now, go ahead and open your eyes. Think about this. Trends are important. And most of you, hopefully, are on a really good trend because of your QT wave. And... But if you don't like what you've seen in this five-year window, realize that something something more is going to change if you want it to, of course. We all have our own personal sovereignty. So please know that I am very aware of everyone's journey and their path to sovereignty. And so deciding that you want to change habits is totally your, your choice, right? And so the wave, the reason we came up with this wave name is because a wave is frequency, right? And each wave is matching a healthy habit. So I really believe that you're not too old and it's never too late to literally do a 180 and change the trajectory of your health. I did it. Um... I had a really bad like childhood. My parents are very, very unhealthy. And I want to inspire you guys with something really quick, okay? So this lady I've followed for quite some time, probably about 10 years. And she's pretty cool. She started lifting weights when she was 
74. She went to the local YMCA and there was a sign on the wall and it said weightlifting competition. And she said to the kid behind the desk, can I do it? And he said, go for it, granny. So she started with five pound dumbbells. Okay. Now take a look at this. I never use the word I can't. I would just simply say I would try. That's the way I live my life. It's just trying to do my best every day. So when I was into the track and field for the seniors over the age of 50, I wanted to become better, to have a little edge in life. So I started the weight training. So little by little, I got stronger and stronger. As soon as the gun would go off, boom, I dust those ladies. That was four years ago. And since then, I have been a competitive power lifter. The audience would say, oh, that old lady, is she lifting? And they say, oh, and ah, when I was able to uh, do some of my accomplishments. Okay, so I just want to share that with you because she started lifting when she was 74. And by the time she was 77, she could deadlift 220. Now. I am assuming, or I shouldn't make assumptions, but most of us don't want to be deadlifters or power lifters or anything. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because of possibility. And it's the same with, um, what's his name? The guy who ran, who broke the four minute mile record. Everybody thought it was humanly impossible to run a sub four minute mile. And then I think his name's Jim Bannister. All of a sudden, one day he broke a sub four. And after that, one after another, after another, people knew that it was possible. And so they were inspired to change. Okay. And they just kept breaking the thing because all of a sudden now it was possible to run a sub four. So I believe you're not too old and it's never too late. And Willie Murphy is one of my favorite examples. So it's pretty awesome. So I believe that there are three different pillars that we're going to talk about and lots of sub pillars. So like, you know how Cynthia always talks about the branches of a tree. So, and I always compare this to a three-legged stool. So the first thing we're going to talk about during these meetings is nutrition. And I'm an advocate of whole foods, seasonal, local, going to your farmer's market, you know, a lot of wild, organic pasture raised foods as minimal like store bought processed foods as possible and for fitness we're going to talk a lot about strength training cardiovascular because your heart is a muscle flexibility and mobility because those oftentimes get overlooked but without them it leads to a lot of injury and then of course balance and balance is really important because people fall and then that there's a downward spiral there. And everybody's starting in a different place in this journey. So that's why I told you guys, I really want to customize everything for you and, and your own needs. And then there's self-care because we want to de-stress. Stress is killer. It increases cortisol. And it's really interesting when somebody has a, uh, like say they get a kidney transplant or something, the doctors give them a cortisol producing drug because that shuts off their immune system and then they won't reject the organ. Okay. So stress and Darlene, you've heard this from her many times. Stress is, is really something we want to eliminate from our life. So we'll talk about that and how to do that. And since you cannot pour from an empty cup, I find that many of us, especially women, tend to take care of everybody else and everything else, but not themselves. So you're going to learn ways that every day you can do things to love yourself, things that light you up and give you joy. Because many people are stuck on that hamster wheel of life. And so basically they keep repeating the same thing over and over and over, but they're not lit up. They're not excited for life. So we're going to work on one healthy habit and everybody's going to have their own. 
Um, but each week we're going to start talking about one healthy habit and how that's going. And when that becomes routine, just like brushing your teeth, then what happens, we want to compound these habits, right? Because then it becomes second nature. And next thing you know, you're doing things that just make you healthier. So basically that's the overview of the presentation I wanted to start with. At the end of our hour, we're going to end with a homework assignment, but I thought it would be great to have discussion. So if anybody has a question or a comment or anything, please just go ahead and raise your hand. I did mute everybody because I am recording this and I want a clean recording for the people who couldn't make it. Oh, come on. (laughs) Nobody has a question. How about a comment with what habit? So I believe that we, we do something called crowding out the crap. Okay. So for instance, we all have habits that support us and habits that don't. So how are we going to crowd out the ones that don't support us? It's essentially by finding something else that we can use to push this one away. All right. So Oftentimes, like if people are addicted to, say, chocolate, while I have recipes for making a healthy chocolate treat so that you're not overdoing it on something that's not supporting you. Cherry, go ahead. Can you come on camera, beautiful girl? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um, My question is like, okay, the verbal abuse that you... Uh, you accept it even though you knew you didn't have to accept it because of what your dad said to your mom. How did you get over the mental portion of it? Because that's a huge factor that took you down that path that you ended up going down. How did you get yourself above the mental aspect that is going to take us here, you know what I'm saying, as we go Mm -hmm. through this, there's a mental portion to it that we're going to have to break through that barrier in order to see ourselves better on the other side. So how did you get past that block? So one thing I did was I said, well, is it true? Like if I was a little overweight or if my mom was overweight, does that make me, make me unlovable? I'm very spiritual, very much into what, you know, Jesus has said, what God says in the Bible. And I know that I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. If my dad does not have the eyes to see that in his own wife, then that's his problem. So that's what I feel. Like I know that we are all inner goddesses and gods. And um, so we need to love ourselves for how we were created and take the hammer out of our hand. And then also talk to our inner child. Like if we... Like in one of my hug videos, I showed a picture of myself as a little girl, which I keep right there in my bathroom. And I talk to that inner child because a lot of times when we are feeling less than, it's because she's not being heard and loved and cared for. And so there's that chatter that we hear. And so the other thing I, the other switch I flipped is, My goal, instead of trying to be skinny, which I'm just, I'm being really raw here, you guys, you're, you're hearing it all. I switched in that I want to be strong and healthy. So the number on the scale doesn't matter to me. It's how I feel and how I perform. So there's a great quote that says, instead of focusing on the number on the scale going down, focus on the number on your weights going up. Now, one thing I've heard from many women is that they don't want to get buff, you know, but I lift heavy and I don't think I'm buffed. So it takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So let me have you put that fear aside. <laughs> okay. When, I'm, when I used to teach boot camp, this one girl's like, I don't want to get buffed. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been lifting for a long time and it's pretty darn hard to get like buffed. So does that make, did that help you at all, Cherry? Okay. Also, you have a daughter. I do. And um, the reason for me bringing it up is because I face my own enemies from my past. But 
when you shared your story, I could resonate with it. Except my thing was, I've always been told, well, you just big bone. Um, my bones is just the same size as anybody else's, I would think. But um, hearing that over and over in a course time, you know, it's like, okay, that's my mental block. Like, I keep seeing myself as big boned mm -hmm. because that's all I've heard all my life. So my thing was, how did she get past the mental part of it? The buff part, that ain't no problem. You know, I lifted weights in high school. So first female to make the 250 club, and that's only for JV football. So I'm all right <laughs> with the book. <ball. laughs> I'm all right with that. But, you know, I do want, I know there's a lot that I can do better for myself. And I also want to be able to pass that out to my 16-year-old because I don't want to look at her and say, you're big bone. No, we need to deal with this for your health purposes, for longer life, for better longevity. And I think this is cool what you're doing. So that was my way. I'm, I'm not sure if anybody else might have had that question psychologically, but I appreciate it. Of course, my darling, of course. And you know, this isn't this whole program, the, the Waves of Wellness is not about weight loss. Everybody's going to have their own goals. And, um, you know, some people might want to gain weight. Some people might want to lose weight. Some people might not care about weight. Uh, you know, other people like I would love you guys to speak up and tell me some of your goals. And then I'm going to give you a jot form mm -hmm. that you can fill out because I'm literally going to tailor this whole thing for you. Okay, Steph. Hey, how are you? Hi, honey. Uh, what I'm <laughs> okay, so what I was getting ready to say is um, I'm vegan. I don't eat any meat. I don't do any dairy, the whole nine yards. But I found myself with the, de with the device not wanting to eat. So I have, I have a regimen of different minerals and vitamins that I take and juices and things like that. But I need to increase protein and whatever else I need to sustain to so that I can build that muscle because I'm noticing that now, uh, I mean, I have been losing weight, but I'm afraid that I'm losing muscle. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I've, I've had some difficulties lately. And so I'm starting a, a, like a, a sh going to a stretch lab so that I can get my mobility back in my, my legs and my limbs and stuff. But that's one of the things that I was quite, you know, wanting to know a little bit about. We talked so, about it before. Yeah. So, you know, vegan works for some people and it doesn't work for others. You need to decide for yourself if that's what works for you. Um, but if you are really wanting to be vegan, lentils are a good source of protein for vegans. Mm -hmm. Also, you can get pea protein powders. Mm -hmm. um, that's another good source. So those are pretty much the best too. But, you know, broccoli itself is high in protein. The problem with plant sources of protein is that they don't have the proper ratios of amino acids. So, um, but, you know, everybody's body's going to perform differently. But if the vegan, the lentils are really good as well as the pea proteins, if you yeah, can stomach them. I do them all the time. Oh, all right, well, yeah. there you go. Yeah, I do that all the time. I've been like this now for about four years. But now that I'm starting to lose with, I guess I'm losing the inflammation. I need to make sure that I'm not losing muscle underneath here. And I am having difficulties walking. So that's what my concern was. And yes, I do spirulina and Corolla all the time in a detox smoothie with uh, bananas. And I mean, I got a regimen that I do, but I, I want to increase that protein and uh, something that would normally like um, maybe additional bars or something else to throw in there. I'm not a fan of, of a whole bunch of nuts. And that's the issue. I think if I liked a little bit more nuts, I might be able to do that, but. So Kite Hill makes a really delicious almond milk pro or almond milk yogurt that you can put protein powder in and then berries. Bars, most bars I don't love. The brand Julian Bakery, I find to be pretty clean as far as a bar goes. Um, there's another bar that I was buying, Marigold, but I don't know if they have a vegan um, 
vegan one or not. I was doing the egg, I think either whey or egg white or something. Okay. okay. So this is cool. Yeah. <laughs> this is also sure Cherry knows about key because that's key's thing as far as doing that release for her. She needs to go in that direction for Cherry. Cherry, have you done the key calls? They're really great. I have not. Uh now how I, I just go on to our back office and find the information for that. Yeah. yeah, they have their own individual tab. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that input. Go ahead, Thank Kelly. You. So a couple of things. So Tracy, you you uh, kind of sparked my um, my mind when you were talking about the inner child because um, I don't know. I and and Terry, it kind of the two of you kind of bounced off of each other a little bit. You know, I was one of those babies that was born overweight. I was like almost 10 pounds when I was born. And, um, you know, people used to say to my mom, oh, she's a fat baby. You got to stop feeding her so much. And she's like, she's a baby. How am I going to cut down her food? You know, like she cries, I feed her. She cries, I feed her. And so like, she's like, oh, it's just baby fat. But it's not just baby fat, right? Because eventually it turned into adult fat, <laughs> you know? And I remember as a little girl, two, three, four years old, whatever, I didn't think of myself as fat. I was just a happy little girl. But, you know, you learn these signals from people and your family and your friends and so forth, you know, those nonverbal cues that say, oh, you're fat, you know, you don't, you don't fit in. And so it's funny that you say you need to nurture the inner child because my inner child was always really very happy. It wasn't until later on in life that those things caught up with me. And I, you know, had those problems where I was like, oh, there's something wrong with me. And like you, Tracy, I, uh, you know, did some really unhealthy things to try and lose weight to the point where a lot of people don't know this about me, but I actually did that HCG diet where I was injecting myself with uh, the pregnancy hormone to lose weight. And it got to the point where if I came off of that medication or tried to eat anything above 400 calories a day, I just ballooned. I destroyed my metabolism. And so what I had to do to fix that was I actually had to have a gastric sleeve surgery to decrease the size of my stomach so that I could only eat tiny portions of food so that I could learn to eat like a normal person again without my metabolism ballooning me to six or 700 pounds. So it was interesting because it was this weird dichotomy. At that point, I wasn't trying to lose weight anymore. I just wanted to be able to to eat like a normal person and not be sick and and you know unhealthy. And I was having chest pains from like the muscle loss of my heart. And people were like, "Oh, well, you had this, you know, gastric sleeve surgery, but you're not losing weight." And I'm like, "No, no, no, no. I don't even care if I lose weight at this point. I just want to live at this point because I had gotten to the point where I was almost going to die. I had lost." so much muscle mass, like you were talking about, um, Steph, and, you know, that affects your heart. When you mm -hmm. lose muscle mass in your, in, your, in your muscles, your bodily muscles, you lose it in your heart as well. So I was having difficulty with my heart being able to pump blood to the rest of my body. I had to fix myself metabolically before I could even think again about trying to lose weight, work out, do anything like that. So, I think the message you're putting out here, Tracy, is so, so important. It's not about the number on the scale. I threw that thing away. I don't care what the stupid scale says. I don't care what the, the label on my shirt or my pants says. I feel healthy. I feel alive. I feel like I could run to the end of the block if my house was on fire and not die in the house. You know, To me, those are the things that are important. If you don't like the way I look, don't look at me. I'm happy. You know, it's not about being fat or about being skinny. Are you, are you thriving? Are you surviving? Are you doing more than just surviving? And are you thriving? You know, and I think that's such an important message. So everything where I come from now stems from that. How do I feel? Do I want to get out of my bed in the morning? Am I, is my back hurting so bad that I don't even want to move? You know, do, can I, can I, exercise without huffing and puffing and wishing I was dead, <laughs> you know? So, you know, uh, for me, it's more about how do I feel and, and am I strong and healthy or am I weak and falling apart and not happy, you know? So thank you so much for doing this. It's, it's so, so important. Thank you, Kelly. Exactly. And it is about how you feel. 
And the only one that knows that is you. So, and I love the quote that says, be who you are and say what you feel for the people who matter don't mind and the people who mind don't matter. And so, you know, when we look at ourselves, we are spirit having a human experience and everybody's experience was decided by them before they decided to have this human experience. So who are we to judge one another? We're just here to love. And I wish that the rest of the world could see what we can see because I feel like, you know, most of us here at QHS, we get it. And, you know, I feel like they will someday. So thank you for sharing, Kelly. That's that's really a great story. Because the other thing I want to add, not just your heart, but your gut. So gut mm-hmm. health, like I interviewed a doctor who has this big clinic in Florida and he was a vegan Ironman triathlete and he was getting sick and not recovering quickly. And he found out from one of his colleagues that it was because the, his gut was not healing and he got leaky gut. And so she said, you need more protein. And so what they did was he ended up developing a line of amino acids to help him with protein supplementation. And um, so then he was able to heal his gut and he started feeling better. But that's a really important distinction is that, that we do need protein for not just our muscles, but our internal organs, which are muscular tissue as well. So good point. Okay, Jana. Hi, uh, can you Hi. hear me? Yep. Good. <laughs> oh, you know, um, I just wanted to show you guys that I'm actually inside of a hyperbaric chamber right now. So I'm just going to kind of scan around. This is the back end. There's a little window. And That's so cool like the some of the controls is that a home-based one did you buy that for your house um it belongs to some friends that are allowing me to use it so yeah so cool and they only cost like four thousand dollars i was really shocked because i had been in one in mexico that was like a really big thing and then here's the top you can see it's like a zipper all the way down you just get in this thing and it's like made out of um some kind of, you know, plasticky tarp stuff. And um, anyway, you, you lay in here like for an hour. And what it is for those people that don't understand what a hyperbaric chamber is, is that it has like three times the atmospheric pressure. So it helps you to oxygenate all your tissues. And it's really great for people especially like diabetics that have ulcers and they can't get oxygen in their tissues. So, um, um, and, and I've got like a condition, it's an autoimmune type condition that's called cryoglobulinemia. Almost nobody's ever heard of it, but um, I did have open ulcers and I started using this and it really helped a lot. And I did look up, there was some literature, like scientific literature on that and how it can really help people that have ulcers to heal them. Um, it's typically used for divers. Um, and so it's, in some places they'll have those for people that have, you know, gone diving and then they need to decompress properly or whatever. But um, yeah, it's really, it's a really great healing resource. And like right now I'm waiting on my creepy wave to come in. I've been, you know, actually not waiting nearly as long as some people, but um, you know, I'm excited to get it. And I've been um, feeling like that I'm getting better just listening to everybody. And, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. But I just want to share that. That's, that's really you. all. It's okay. also good for cancer because um, cancer cells do not like oxygen. And so hyperbaric oxygen is recommended. So that's really good because we all have cancer cells in our body. And so just by you going in that for your other reasons, um, it is also killing cancer cells is, is my understanding. So good for you. Hello. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Larry. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hold on one second. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. You guys make sure that your only your first name is showing. Okay. 
um, because I'm really want to protect your privacy as much as possible. So, okay. Go ahead, Larry. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. Excellent. Well, I don't have near as colorful the stories as what we've heard. My, my, my goal is real simple. I need to lose weight. Um, when I look at the, you, you, you asked us to look over the past five years, and really my, my path dates back for the last 10 years. I had a, a, a major change in life, and I relocated and did a lot of different things differently. And uh, it just seems like ever since I, I, I moved, um, you know, my, my routines, the things I did before that I think helped sustain my health, um, I've been broken and I just haven't been able to get back, uh, back on track. I used to be a competitive cyclist, although you can't tell it by looking at me, I probably have two competitive cyclists in me. Um, but, um, um, I, I, I like to ride, but it's just not safe here where I live. And, uh, and so I, I can't do that. Um, and it, like I said, it's just real simple. I just need to lose some weight. I will say that since I've had my QT wave device, that I've started to feel a lot more mentally energetic. And um, I feel an agility that I used to have uh, that I didn't that I didn't have. I'm 66 years old and um, and I've always been active. I've, I've always had a swift walking pace and I, I didn't realize I had lost it. And uh, until my my QT wave started really kicking in, I noticed that my see my phone tracks the, my length of stride and all these different other stability uh, metrics, uh, or should I say not my phone, but my watch does. And I started noticing that, you know, what, what my, my pace was and what my stride length was and things like that. And I said, wow, I can see it increasing uh, over the last couple of weeks. And obviously, whenever I get to do my interview with you, I'll, I'll give you all the, the you know, down and dirty on it. But um it's just real simple for me. I just want to lose weight. Okay. Well, you know what you can do? Think of it as energy waiting to be burned. Okay. So then that way you're like embracing it because it's going to sustain you through, you know, whatever you decide to work on first. Right. So that is, in my opinion, is one way that we can look at our body that we maybe want to shed some LBs. Like I always say, it's just fluffy, you know, just a little fluffy here, but just think of it as energy. And then that way, you know, it's going to be burned eventually. Okay. Mm -hmm. And biking is great exercise because it's motion is lotion for the joints, right? So the more we um, can pedal, it's really good. Now for women, biking needs to be supplemented with something else because of bone density. So they've noticed that like walking is actually better on your joints or on your bones than cycling because there's no impact. Um, but cycling is great and I do it. And I do think my, oh, here's a good story. So my husband has been a mountain biker for like 20 years. He's really good at mountain biking. And he, I, we went on a vacation in June and I made him go hiking with me and he was sucking wind. He was horrible at hiking. I was so shocked. I'm like, gosh, your cardio fitness is so great with all your mountain biking. And, but it was hard for him to hike. So I, I have really seen just recently that it's important to vary what you do, you know, because your body will adapt to, I know it adapts to food. So we don't want to eat the same food all the time. We really want to vary our, our vegetables, our proteins, everything, but I noticed that with him, but now he finally got it and now he can keep up with me. Well, I, so, I used to cycle. I used to cycle more miles than I used to put miles in my car. Oh so, gosh. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't a fearful of exercise. We did a lot of it. We rode two and sometimes three times a day. Uh, I guess when you're with a racing team, we tend to want to stay real competitive, but um uh, it just seemed like when I made that life change, it really threw me in a different direction. Yeah. And that's all it takes is some people <laughs> might have a move or a death in the family or a new job or certain things to derail them. And um, it happens. It happens all the time or an injury. 
You know, I mean, my injuries used to derail me because I then I'd get depressed. I'll never forget one day I was teaching Zumba, loved doing that, and I dislocated my knee. And I was out for quite a while, ended up having knee surgery. And man, did I get depressed. And then when I decided to stop running, I was like, now who am I? Like you identify with what you create yourself to be. So everything is a loop in your brain, right? And the more you do something habitual, you get that strong loop. So when you're a professional cyclist, that that loop is like steel, right? And um, so now it's just creating a new loop. And also what Cherry was talking about, I don't know if she's still here, but that loop in our brains about we're not good enough or anything that we create, it's just about finding a a different point. Like I am worth it. I am love. And just keep telling yourself that with self-talk and it will happen. So, um, okay. So I just put a jot form in here in the chat so you guys can open it and fill it out. And um, tell me what it is your goals are. If you guys want some meal plans, I have those. Um, Like for anybody who wants to lose weight, I have sample meal plans that I used to give my clients. Um, So my plan is to stay here as long as you guys need me. And um, but at like 10 till I'm going to stop the Q&A and or pause it, I should say, and play, give you guys your homework assignment. And then I'll come back and finish answering questions just in case I don't get through everybody. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, Cheryl, you're up. Oops. Get myself. I guess I'm on. Okay. I'm on. Um, so I've been uh, vegetarian, not vegan for about five years. And I, um, I do, I think eat pretty healthfully in terms of vegetables, salad daily, incorporating grains, et cetera. So, but what I was really um, hoping to do is actually lose some weight. Uh, I kind of track back to never having been overweight as a child, but um, as soon as I had my babies, it was like the aliens took over and my body was completely different. <laughs> and so losing that weight has uh, virtually been impossible. You know, it's uh, so it's not like a lot, but it's just it, it, I feel like metabolically, I'm just not tuned in to being able to burn that fluff, if you will. Um, but more to my question about jumping back to being vegetarian, I do eat quite a bit of, I mean, I would say a portion daily of some kind of um, commercial protein product, um, you know, non-meat meat. And I stick with things that are non-GMO, but I think I really wanted to find out your perspective on those things. And so I, I live with a, a complete carnivore. So this is kind of my issue was, you know, making meals that are going to accommodate things. So vegetarian, actually, there's a lot of options more so than vegan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you can do eggs, which I usually Mm -hmm. have about three eggs a day. I have my own chickens. They are organically fed and they love eating all my veggie and fruit scraps. Um, So eggs are one. And then I love... At Costco, at my Costco, I found this organic. Um, I know I'm going to get this wrong. There's two different types of cows, okay? There, but this is marked like yeah. B, um, B. It's something B, but it's an organic Greek yogurt, or maybe it's a regular yogurt. I'll um, snap a picture of it and share it with you guys so mm-hmm. that you can see it because it's in the fridge. Um, but you can. T- take like a Greek yogurt and put protein powder in it. And I love doing that. I always either put flax, chia, or hemp seed, and then some berries. Um, One thing I would caution you on is whatever grains you're using. Um, Those are, I don't do grain, but like sweet potatoes, Mm -hmm. um, lentils, you know, there's other things that are better than most grains. Mm -hmm. Um, So like that's the one thing I would be cautious on because a lot of grains are inflammatory. 
Okay. Um, and that has to do with, you know, like gluten and sugar are the two things that I think everybody should be not eating. No gluten, no sugar. Um, anything genetically modified, we want to be careful of. Mm -hmm. Um, and a a lot of grains are genetically modified because, you know, they have to feed the world. So I put that in air quotes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. The sugar is a bit of a downfall. (laughs) Yeah. It's so funny. My friend, my friend's husband was vegan and he just was so proud of being vegan, but man, he would devour a thing of candy or a bag of chips you know, and I'm like, what's the point of being vegan and, you know, being healthier if you're not, if you're not going to eat, you know, good food. So, Mm -hmm. but sugar is like crack. I mean, telling you like what it does to your brain, it is so highly addictive that Mm -hmm. I find that that's a lot of issue plus the inflammation it creates. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I have arthritis in one hip and I'm sure that that's, you know, been a, a factor there. So that's kind of what I've been dealing with, although since I've had the QT wave now for almost a year when I got my first device, I have noticed a real change in terms of the level of pain has improved significantly. And uh, that's so I'm very happy with what it's done. Isn't that just so amazing? I hear that all the time that the pain is really dissipating. So That's awesome. All right. Did that help you, Cheryl? It did. Thank you so much. Okay, hon. Okay, Linda, I guess you're the last question Then we can do our homework. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I missed the first part of the, so I'm glad it's going to be recorded. I'll catch up. Uh, And I I did get in where you were talking about not getting buffed up. (laughs) Uh, But I am looking forward to being buffed again because I was into light bodybuilding and weightlifting in my 40s. Good for so you. So I'm going to go back to that a little bit. Um, I have the bands, but, you know, I, I, need to, I need to have a specific area. I had always gone to the gym, and now I don't. So I need to have a gym in the house. I um, also wanted to talk a little quickly about... Uh, baby fat. Uh, I had an in-house caretaker tell me my eight-month-old was too fat. And I thought, what? what? (laughs) This was my first and only child. So I had no idea. And she had a four-year-old. So I thought, what? Um, I, you know, luckily I didn't have her for very long because there were all sorts of things going on that shouldn't have been. Uh, That I found out later after the fact, after she was gone, my neighbor had told me some stuff. Thanks for letting me know ahead. But um, I had a doctor's visit uh, as a a checkup for for the baby. And he said uh, she was one pound under what she should be. So then I realized that this caretaker was not feeding her during the day um, because she was a good eater. And maybe that was a surprise to my caretaker because maybe her son was not was a picky eater i don't know she was feeding him all the sweets i could tell uh long story short um and i don't always go with what a doctor says back in when i was a kid that you know the family doctor had the final say you didn't go for a second or third opinion about anything you just Mm -hmm. believe what they told you to be fact so thank goodness we all go to a second or third opinion um, nowadays. Um, I love chickens. <laughs> now, <laughs> uh, I live in a household where I have a husband who loves carbs, loves mm-hmm. bread, loves pasta, loves desserts. And I have to fix dinner most of the time. So um, I'll skip the bread and put whatever on a salad instead for myself or eat smaller portions of the pasta and maybe take one or two bites of the cherry pie and, and be done with it. But I mean, he, he's happy with this. uh, And so I I have to sort of work both sides of the fence. Um, But uh, uh, I think I eat well. Um, There's probably some adjustments that can be added 
Uh, I had mentioned the morning smoothie that I was making every every morning, but because I'm so busy, I'm not doing it anymore. So he, my husband, took on the task, but he got burned out. <laughs> he got burned <laughs> out on it too. So maybe I should fix it for dinner instead. Anyway, um, I look forward to seeing the whole video. So you're not you alone. Post it. Let me just say, my <laughs> husband, I call him burrito boy because he loves Mexican food and he would live yes. off of it. Italian so, and Mexican, Italian and Mexican. Yeah. And if I'm making pasta for him, I make like spaghetti squash or zoodles for me. Um, there's always a substitute because let's face it, whatever tastes good on the pasta is because of the sauce. So yeah. I made homemade pesto the other day. He had it on pasta. I had it on spaghetti squash. Yeah, you so, could, yeah, definitely so, even cut up your zucchinis and just l ladle the sauce on it and call it. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to buy some spaghetti uh, squash because I quit buying it because I, I just do a small portion of the pasta because I do organic uh, and I'm, I'm very conscious with the um, no GMO and organic anything. Um, if I, if, if I can get it that's what i eat uh otherwise i just skip over it if i can't get organic and organic is not what it used to be or was supposed to be because there is runoff but um needless to say you know the fewer pesticides we put in our systems the better and if i wind up getting a fruit that has uh, a heart like an orange or or a uh, tangerine i will let it soak in the uh, baking soda vinegar, white vinegar wash for 30, 40 minutes to uh, remove any outer residues that might still be there. Anyway. Yeah, that's a good idea. That works really well. So um, that's Paul. Okay, I thought it was you. All right, so really quick, Paul, I'm gonna go ahead and start our homework assignment really quick, and then I'll go ahead and call on you because I have blocked out quite a bit of time for this call. Um, so I'll get right to you. Okay. So let's go. Where are we? Okay. I'm going to share something. So I'm going to play a song for you and I want you to go ahead and close your eyes and go into your heart space and listen to these words in this song. And then after we close, while you're still in that, in that Zen space, I want you to write a vision statement. So if you were to see yourself a year from now and you're living your very best life, what does that look like? Imagine that you are in that right now. So... You're going to like write it as if it's already happened, like you're in present tense, and then you're reading it to yourself. So it might be something for me like it's, gosh, what month is <laughs> September 2024, and I am in Italy enjoying the grand opening of our Q Arc Center with my husband, and this is what's happening, and whatever it is for you, okay? Please go ahead and we're going to listen to the song. And then those that want to stick around, great. I'll take more questions and we can hang out more. I think I'm going to open up a telegram room for this group so that we can have more Q&A and weekly engagement. If you guys need accountability or whatever, please also fill out that jot form. Um, but those that need to dip out at the top of the hour, you can. Those who want to stay, um, we can we can answer more questions and have more discussion. I have about another 30 minutes or so. Um, okay. So let's see if I can do this again. Share sound. Okay. Go ahead and close your eyes. And go into your heart and just listen. Okay. I'm not crying. Are you crying? Whoops. Hold on. Let me. Why is this not stopping? <laughs> oh there we go okay she wanted to keep singing to us 
So that is Natasha Bedingfield unwritten. And I really, really do believe, like I said at the beginning of this, you're not too old and it's never too late to go and write your new story. You can do it. You just need to believe in yourself that you have all you need to be, do, and have whatever you want. The only thing that stops us is all that inner chatter, that outer chatter. But by following, and we're going to talk a lot about this, the law of attraction tools. And you just don't just get out of your own way. That's basically it. Just know that you can do it. So, all right. Your homework is the vision statement. Paul, go ahead, sweetie. Oh yeah, I just wonder if you could elaborate. Uh, uh, what's your uh, thanks? Uh, what's your take on uh, fasting? Um, it just depends on the individual. I'll say that first, and it depends on if it's intermittent fasting. The longest fast I've done is the three and a half days, and I felt fine. Um, so I think intermittent fasting for some people works really well. For others, not so much. A lot of people don't do it properly. I do feel like you still want electrolytes. And um, like we're going to talk about hydration because hydration is super duper important. And I drink about a gallon of water and I also use hibiscus tea as a water. It's an herbal tea. Um, And but really, truly, we need to hydrate. So fasting is safe if you do it with electrolytes and um, and you listen to your body. And when I was do when I did that three and a half day fast, I still did all my workouts, like my normal workouts. So for me, I felt good. But once you don't feel good, then it's not safe. And don't do it too long. I really right. do feel that if it's too long, it breaks your metabolism. So when you say fasting. What's the duration you're referring to? Where did you go? You guys keep your hand up while you're talking so that I can find you. <laughs> there I'm, you are, Paul. I'm still there. Well, I uh, I usually fat don't I usually don't eat breakfast. I usually try to go as long as I can from uh, around six o'clock in the evening to twelve noon to one o'clock, and that's basically I fast like that almost every day. Uh, and I feel pretty darn good. Cool. Um, but sometimes I'll go in a whole a whole day uh, just because I have a uh, I've got some belly fat and uh, I'm not sure how, what I'm how, why I'm uh, it could be I have a problem with my uh, liver possibly that it's uh, fast not going away. So uh, I'm just uh, anyways, that's what I do as far as fasting. Um And break it up. You know, like I said earlier, we want to mix things up to create confusion. Metabolic confusion is really important. So Uh you don't want to do the same thing every day because then your body's like, oh, I know what he's doing. Okay, I'm going to hold on because your body's job is to keep you alive. And when you restrict too much and don't give it what it needs, it will hold on to what it has and it will shut your metabolism Mm -hmm. off like Kelly was explaining. So that you want to really keep it confused. And Like I said earlier, I didn't use this term, but we are bio-individual. So what works for one might not work for another. And so you want to see how you feel. That's the biggest indicator. And also if you're getting to your goals. And so I, I would, you know, mix it up a little bit just to trick your metabolism. Right. Okay. Thanks. Okay, cool. Go ahead, Kelly. Um, A few things. I actually have a very extensive um, history of fasting over the last couple of decades. I've done every type of fast, every duration of fast. The longest water fast I ever did was 30 days. Um, And I can tell you that you do lose excess fat. You do. I wasn't doing it to lose fat. I was doing it because I was healing a uterine fibroid and ovarian cysts that I had. Um, So I was doing it an extended fast for that very specific purpose to get into autophagy to break up those um, abnormal cells. However, Tracy is absolutely right. If you are going to do a fast of any duration longer than 24 hours, you absolutely must replace your electrolytes because I've done it both with and without. And without, Mm -hmm. you feel sick, you feel nauseous, you feel weak, you feel fatigued, you feel like 
crud. If you're not replacing those electrolytes, you're in trouble. Right. Um, so that's that's number one. Um, and if you want more information on fasting, I can give you a lot of a lot of that. Um, the other thing I was going to mention is the whole idea of bulking up for women. The number one reason that happens in women is because their estrogen and testosterone levels are completely out of balance. So women who have who suffer from something called PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which I was right on the border of, will tell you that you're you start to grow like facial hair, your your muscles start to bulk up in ways that you didn't expect. Um, your menstrual cycles change, like you're just your all of your physicality as a woman starts to change. Um, and you're more likely to bulk up when you work out. Um, and it wasn't until I started losing weight and breaking down the fat because the fat cells hold extra estrogen, you know, mm. so that it gets stored in your fat cells, but your body's not able to use it when it's bound up in the fat cells. So it wasn't until I started to actually lift weights and, and bulk up a little bit and lose that extra fat that I balanced out those hormones. And I even did something called seed cycling, where you rotate pumpkin seeds and um, you know, other types of seeds like chia seeds and those types of things on a, it actually goes in, in rhythm with your menstrual cycle. If you're a woman, um, to keep those hormones into a better balance naturally so that you're not holding on to excess testosterone, which is does all, which does all that bulking. Um, so that's also something we can talk about because that is a real fear for some women. And once you build up those muscles, it's hard to, to get them to atrophy back down to the size and shape that you want. So if you're not balanced in your hormones, you may have these problems. Hmm. Oh. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. PCOS is a big thing. So I've heard, I had a client that had PCOS. It was and difficult. sugar, sugar is a huge inflammation, you know, mm. marker that causes all, a lot of these symptoms. So for me, it was even less than losing weight, cutting the sugar out of my diet. Uh, so for me, I had to do a very low carb diet, not completely carb free. I, I kept some carbs because women need a certain amount of carbs in their diet or they're just not going to feel good and, you know, be able to function well. Um, but it was finding that right balance where I was under the threshold of it causing me inflammation and and not causing me to feel like I was deprived and, and wanting and craving all the time. So it's hard for women. We have a rough deal. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It is. And, you know, a lot of my friends went and did those hormone pellets. And um, back in 2016, I'm like, well, I'm going to try it. Um, Jana, you're, I saw you there. I wanted to say something about ulcers in a minute. And so I tried those hormone pellets, which I do not recommend at all. Mm -hmm. I gained 13 pounds in three weeks and I started growing hair, like in places I don't <laughs> want hair and More testosterone than you needed. Yes, exactly. And I told the doctor, get these out. And she's like, I can't, they just have to run the course. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I, all my friends still do it. And or I should say my old friends, um, <laughs> my pre-COVID friends. And um, so they all still do it. And I just don't get it. They complain they want to lose weight. And I see, to keep telling them the same things over and over and over. And whatever. that It's just not good for us. Um, okay, Debbie. They keep doing it anyway. Yeah. Wait, you're muted, babe. Got it. Okay. Um, hi, Tracy. Hi. Uh, talking about mobility and and um, since a device, you know, I I have less overall body pain and so forth, um, and that's great and I love it. So I can walk further and, but you know, um, I have this chronic thing with my IT pain, IT band pain, and um, because I I thought about that when Paul, you know, Larry is talking about cycling, because an orthopedist said cyclists have the same thing. Um, because you're, you know, sitting and I ride horses. And so it pretty much is. And, but is there, are there exercises you can do? Because like last night I was up all night, mm -hmm. not because I rode, but because I worked hard yesterday, which you feel better. So you work harder. 
<laughs> That's kind of a vicious cycle. I should have backed off a little bit and did too much. So where is your pain exactly? It it runs from my left hip all the way down into my knee mm. and sometimes it goes into my toe. Do you have a foam roller? Mm-hmm. Do you foam roll? <laughs> Most people well, say I have kind of one. Hard. I don't that one's so hard to do. If it's painful, it's unhealthy tissue. Okay. So you just want to support yourself on it mm -hmm. and do like little baby rolls, but you want to get the top of your thigh, the 90 degree and the 45. Okay. So mm -hmm. like if this is your leg, I would say this is your leg you want here, mm -hmm. here and here. Um, and you can roll out your glute too, because it might be there. Also doing a low lunge stretch. I made videos um, on our YouTube channel you guys can find. and um, But a low lunge stretch will help your hip flexor, which is uh, it gets weak from sitting. So it gets shortened, you know, so you want to open up and stretch our hip flexors, which my favorite way is to do a low mm -hmm. lunge. Um, so, but the foam rolling, I'm telling you, is painful, but that means it's unhealthy tissue. So you, you don't have to go it. the whole length of the roller. No, you, you just baby rolls. Yeah. So say if you wanted to start um, at the top of your hip joint here and just mm -hmm. do like the top of your quad and then work your way down towards like the top of your knee, not touching your kneecap, of course, and then do the side, the 90 degree and that and then the hardest part that hurts the worst is usually the 45. So, but just do like a little bit and just support yourself more with your arms and your other legs so that your whole body weight's not on the roller. Okay. I saved a guy from back surgery because I taught him how to have a foam roll. Oh so, my God. That's awesome. Yeah. I know it hurts, but that's because you're working out those adhesions in the fascia. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, you guys, I guess we'll wrap it up. So thank you all for coming. Please fill out the jot form because I am going to tailor all this content just for you guys and your goals. And um, also, I guess they're going to make a page for this project on the website and I'll post the recording and um, please do your vision statement. So I'll let you all know about having a special mm. telegram room just for us okay sounds good all right you guys Mwah. big kisses to you all thank have a beautiful you. weekend thank you tracy thank you. Thanks, crazy. okay thank bye you guys tracy. thanks everybody bye. bye bye for now